I'm really glad to be here and to be part of this service. For the last a few weeks, I've been on leave, and I've really missed this place, one as if you were. I think until you walk away uh, from this place, you may not um, <clears throat> realize how great the worship service is here. Uh, one of the things that I missed most was, um, was the praise and worship, you know, the lively praise and worship, not the frozen chosen, you know. Somebody called the Presbyterians the frozen chosen, you know. Like the Lord made them, he chose them, and then he froze them. So even when a song is being sung, they are still frozen. At least here, we are unfrozen a bit. I still feel we need to dance better, but I think we are better than many places. I visited many churches, and I still missed praise and worship. And because we are online, I would always look for a moment to again watch the service again and enjoy the praise and worship and it's difficult to watch the, watch the praise and worship and be seated, you know. Uh, I'll stand and sing. Again, I also missed when uh, sometimes the congregation was shown. And I would see faces that I miss, I tell you. It is easier to minister to people you don't love than to minister to people you love. Because you miss them all the time. <laughs> so preaching to people I love have made me miss you a lot. I am back and I'm happy to be back. And uh, to see... Um, what God is doing and to preach on a new pulpit. Uh, I realize we have a new one here and we thank God. Very creative and uh, youth. I'm also happy to see the youth doing God's work in a big way. I'm happy to see the youth leading the services. Uh, I'm happy to see the youth helping us with projection. You know, the average age of the people projecting here is less than uh, 30, you know. I think 25 is the average age. Uh, to Kiesabu this sort of, I love to find the average, you know. I'm glad to, be, to see all that. And also to have seen wonderful service. I saw the Women's Guild. Wonderful service. Wonderful service, you know. Again, I saw Thanksgiving. This, uh, you have missed a lot, you know. Uh, I would see and I would see how vibrant you are. Glory and honor to God. I've also seen, uh, again, the prison worship doing incense arise with a uniform that I need. The director should hear that. I don't mind the uniform, you know, it's a very nice one, written, arise. One ask your son. Young your girls are and preach, you know. So I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to stand before us to preach God's word in this wonderful service. And so, I want us to make a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. As followers in one ship, and as sinners forgiven, we are grateful. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you bind us together as a Roman family church, so that we are together as a family, O oh God. Minister to us, those who are here, gathered, and those who are online and are part of this fellowship. Lord, we pray that you may bless us together. We pray for the leadership of this church, a blessing upon their lives. Thank you for each and everyone who helps this service come to pass. Every ministry represented here in front, but also behind the scenes, a blessing, a blessing upon them. Praying for each and every member in this ear of the Lord. Though they may call it the ear of COVID, we choose to know it is the ear of the Lord. Help us know you more according to our theme. And help us, O oh God, so that we may choose to know you, Christ Jesus, above all other knowledge. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our reading uh, will come from the book of Psalm 37. Psalm 37. <clears throat> uh, we can begin from verse 20 and then we do 27. The Bible says, But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish into smoke. They shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay. But the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth. But those cast by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not, utterly, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his right hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. He is ever merciful, 
He is ever merciful and led. His descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talks justice. Second reading from the book of Amos, chapter 5. We do a few verses from uh, verse 15. <clears throat> Hate evil, love good. Establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Amos 5, verse 16, again. Therefore the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this. There shall be wailing in the streets. They shall say in all the highways, alas, alas. They shall call the farmer to mourning and skillful lamenters to wailing. In all vineyards there shall be wailing. For I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what is good of the day of the Lord to you? There will be like darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. As though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent beat him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is not very dark, but no brightness in it? I hate and I despise your feasts, and do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offering and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. Nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your string instruments. But let justice run down like a river, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Knowing God, our topic today is a God of justice. We live in a country, <clears throat> because I'll move, uh, all right. We live in a country <clears throat> whereby injustice reigns every day. We live in a country where if there is justice, that is the point actually that we find it unusual. We live in a country, I remember looking at the newspaper, and um, there was a policeman who had helped somebody, I think an old woman, cross the road. It was said that policeman does that all the time. And he was held as a hero. The opposite should be happening. Any policeman who does not help an old person pass the road is the one who should be in the newspaper doing the wrong thing. It is the police service to me, she water. Yet we are hating those who seem to do what is right. We live in a country where if justice is served, it, it, is, it becomes a milestone. The other day when uh, the Honorable Waluke and the accomplices were, 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 were given a sentence, it was a celebration all over the place. I see that is not what should happen. I see that it is the abnormal thing. That when the injustice reigns, it is normal. We live in a country that is fallen. We live in a country where people crave for justice and don't get it. We live in a country that people are coming to tell us now they want to take over the nation and change it. I think African presidents and the people in power have a very short memory. They have a very short memory. Actually, I remember looking at a billboard. I think it was in South Sudan or one of these countries. And the president... The president was on the billboard and he was vying. And what was his slogan? Vote for change. And I'm wondering, what's wrong with this? How do you vote for change and he is the current president? But then I remember in Kenya we have the current deputy. But you still need to vote for change. But anyway, we live in a country like that. Where everybody wants to vote for president. I've been MP from when I was in class one in 1992. I have seen them in power all the time and we have not had justice. But somehow the same people are gathering together to come against the nation one more time. We live in a country where during a pandemic like this, a government institution can wake up, go and demolish houses at night. Even when it's raining and the children are crying like dogs. On the following day, a government official stands up to justify the actions. We live in a country where if you have no money, you have no justice. If you have money, you can break the speed limit as much as you want. If you have money, you can do whatever you want. I know by tomorrow or Tuesday, 
the person who shot two people right here at Quivers, the biggest club, by the way. I don't know what is happening with Dome. Maybe we should talk about that another time. How come we are attracting so many bars and clubs? I, I mean, apart from Tuapa, which is the one with the most clubs per square kilometer, Dome is the second. We have more crowds per square kilometer than any other part of the country. The only one that is ahead of us is Mtuapa. What's wrong with us? There's something wrong anyway. But I'm saying, and yet some of these clubs are in residential areas, which is against the law, but they reign. Injustice in this country is the order of the day. You go to the courts and try to file a case right now, and you are given a date of hearing next year, December. A politician enters the same place and they had tomorrow. I am sure the person who shot, I'm not a prophet, but I'm sure the person who shot people here at Quivers, when they go tomorrow to ask for a bond or bail, they will get it. They have a gun, there's a video of them shooting them, and he accepts that he shot them. But he will be out. And very soon, his gun will be returned to him. We live in such a country. Such a country. Where even inside the police station, people are asking for bribe. And I'm not giving stories that I have heard. I'm giving what I know. That I'm in the police station, I have said, all right, this one I am going to accept. Let's go on, even to the courts. I'm inside the police station, and the person writing the OB is telling me, Mkupa unataka bado tuadike. Na vile na kuwana umekasa, umekosa tuwe fumoja. At the police station. We live in such a country where we have free primary education that is more expensive than when it was not free. We live in a country where we have free secondary education, free tuition, yet it is more expensive than when it was not free. We live in this country, in this country, where as you walk past a cow and someone milking, by the time you get to the supermarket, their milk has doubled the price, but the farmer gets half price all the time. We live in a country of injustice. And here we come to speak about God of justice. Justice is the nature of God. It is, it is in his nature. He cannot deny himself. In God, there is no room for, justice, for injustice. Why is he a God of justice? It is because he is a God of righteousness. Righteousness is doing the right thing no matter what are the consequences. Righteousness is doing the right thing all the time in every place to everyone regardless of their social status. God of righteousness is a God of justice. Number two is that when God created the world, he created it with a pillar of justice. Even when he had an opportunity to tell Adam, the only option you have is to love me. God decided to give Adam a free will because he's a God of justice. And he told Adam, if you love me, you can obey me. If not, there's a tree at the middle. Don't eat it, but it's your choice. Even at the point where God would have said, I will give you no free will. I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who created the Garden of Eden. I am God. You must do what I say. God still took a chance to give Adam free will. And he is God. And he says, don't eat of it. But he did not remove the tree. It was there. There was a possibility of Adam doing otherwise. And he did it. And I hear sometimes people saying, what if Adam did not eat the tree? Or maybe he was Chinese and he ate the snake. What would have happened? I want to tell you, Atunga Fikiwa. Do you think these Kenyans would have allowed the tree to stay? I mean, they would have eaten it. <laughs> but I suspect Cain would have eaten it first. The reality is God gave us a chance. Because he's a God of justice. That although I know what is right, I'm not going to infringe on your rights. I will allow you to choose. It is not by force. The world itself. That is why everyone craves for justice. That is why we crave 
for justice. That is why injustice angers us. That is why righteousness attracts. Because the world was made for justice. Of course, we know what happened after the fall. Injustice began. Immediately after the fall, injustice uh, began. Number three, God warns us about his justice. He tells us if we commit unrighteousness, we shall face the consequences. It is Cain who has told, why is your face downcast? Why are you so sad? If you do right, won't it you be accepted? But if you don't, sin is crouching at your door. God is warning us that as you do every unrighteous act, remember he is a God of justice. <coughs> he is a God of justice. Sometimes we think we have gotten away with it. And that's why I remember Moigai Wajoroge being arrested. And I listened to the song he had talked about. And he had talked about politicians and saying, you will steal from the poor. You will steal from the poor. But one day you will come back from India in a coffin. The problem was not that. The problem was that the video had a real coffin of the little Gashagwa. That is why he was arrested. Because <laughs> I don't know what happened to Nyeri. You have a fourth governor now. Only with the two governments in power, but the fourth, fourth governor. They keep on dying. That if you can meet unrighteousness, God says you shall face it. It may look like the law is on your side. You can go and look at technicalities. You have killed. Did you see, by the way, that Onyancha, the serial killer, may actually be free this week? It's possible that Onyancha will be walking around after he confessed killing. After he confessed killing many people. And one of them was found, the body was found. Every, every evidence is against him. But somehow, there was a lawyer who stood and said he was not tried properly. And the judge said it is true. And now a serial killer may be walking around. But let the lawyer know, and the judge know, and the police who didn't do anything know that their children are walking around as Onyancha walks around too. Praise the name of the living God. When, when people are snatching phones from us, the policemen watch until their phones are being snatched now. <laughs> they thought their phones were safe. Because the reality is, injustice will catch up with you anyway. Even if you think you are above the law, you are not above God of justice. How does God execute his justice? How does God execute his justice? Number one, God rewards righteousness. Psalm 37, verse um, 25. The Bible says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for food. But if you do righteousness, you may not own 200 acres of land somewhere. You may not drive the biggest car. But the Lord will take care of you and your descendants. Praise the name of the living God. But when you do justice, when you are righteous, although you may not be the richest on the land, God will give you the peace that surpasses human understanding. God will take care of you and give you an assurance that your descendants will not beg for bread. Recently, I remember seeing a former member of parliament with gum boots working somewhere in a farm he is calling himself a farm manager, but he is just really a casual liberal. Former member of parliament. And I still remember his days and what he did. But now it has come to a point that he has realized he will die of hunger. And he has gone, he is saying, I'm the farm manager, but he's really a casual liberal like the rest, only that he is leading them. And now he is understanding <laughs> what the common monarchy goes through every day. And yet there are people during this time who are casual laborers. Like our parents. And at least now we can employ him as a casual laborer also. So that he understands how our parents felt when they were casual laborers as we were paying our school fees. As he ate the CDF. Praise the name of the living God. That he rewards righteousness. 
Number two is that God promises blessings for those who, who do what is right. He promises, verse 27, he says, Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. Verse 29 says, The righteousness shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. You see, in a short while, the unrighteous and the unjust looks like they are going ahead, like they are going ahead of you. Those who corrupt themselves into jobs, those who get promotions by using coercion and other means, they look like they are going ahead. But a time comes, at the long run, you look back and say, righteousness is always rewarded. The Bible says again, number three, the Lord punishes the wicked, the unjust and the unrighteous. Verse 20 of Psalm 37 says, But the wicked shall perish. The enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish into smoke. They shall vanish away. You cannot invent a way of injustice and hope to get away with it. I remember the owner of Kerocha Industries, who happens to be a member of PCA, being asked, would you like your children to be good customers to you? And she was angry and indignant. And I wondered, why should our children then become your customer? If your children cannot become your customer, why, how come our children are your customer? The reality is, you cannot destroy our children and hope that your children will be well. I say this starting on a pulpit. There is no way you can make money from destroying our children and hope your children will have peace. There is a God of justice on the throne and he is watching as you do that. He hears the cry of the mother who sees a drunkard child come in with nothing on them, who sees a graduate live a hopeless life. Those tears don't fall on the ground. They fall on the hands of Almighty God. And I tell you, you shall receive your full pay. Praise the name of the living God. During when COVID money disappeared, one of the government op officials bought some land, 3,600 acres, and built a conservancy somewhere in Nanyuki. When the money is disappearing, they are building a conservancy. And even if you, you want to say we cannot connect, we have no evidence, surely, surely, which government official affords 3,600 acres in our days? Immediately after that, a civil servant is buying apartments in Ruaka and, and Runda. All over, a civil servant. All over. And we say we cannot connect them, we don't even know. Very, after some time, I took my brother to hospital in uh, PGH at night. He was barely walking. And as a man, if you see a man who is not even walking, he is bad. So I'm taking him to hospital and I'm told he's, it's an emergency, you need to get this medicine. He needs injections immediately at, at the casualty. I go to the casualty and say, please do this as fast as you can. I do not want to lose my brother. And I am told, uh, he's Odawa Hakuna. Go and buy. This is at the middle of the night. Which chemist is open? So what do I do? I have to run to the nearest private hospital. And of course, what does the private hospital do when they visit see me? They know they have to pay their bills. So they see you and then they imagine, oh, are you paying with card or cash? You are asked even before you are treated. Are you paying with cash or? So that we know how much we charge you. This is the country we live in. At least two of the, two of the countries that had universal health care have visited their hospitals. One of them was ridiculous. During an accident, you arrive with the victims and you are told go and buy groves, bandages, this kind of medicine and come back faster. In a hospital, and I was going out, I saw a signage that disgusted me. Teaching and referral hospital. What do I want to hire? That a hospital without graphs is written there teaching and referral. And the governor is walking around telling us about how good he is. A time is coming. A time is coming. That the God of justice, that God who heard my cry 
When I was crying, God, save my brother, save my brother. Shall I come to repay the wickedness. Praise the name of the living God. The Lord punishes the wicked and the unjust. Number four, he has mercy on the repentant. You know, the reality is that all of us have broken the law of the Lord. The reality is we have sinned against the just God. So what is our hope? What is our hope? When we are in the hands of an angry God, as um, Jonathan Edwards would say. Please look for that sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. One of the best classic sermons by Jonathan Edwards. Who, what is it? In Kenya, we have, I think it is called uh, what? Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation. Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation. <laughs> it never happens like that. There is a truth and justice, so there's truth, then you go to jail. Or truth and reconciliation. Truth, you forgive, and then you are reconciled. But you cannot have the three. If you took me to jail, there is no space for reconciliation and forgiveness. It's done. Justice has been served. It's only at the cross that the three of them met. That Jesus, who is the truth, was on that cross. And the truth was, even the worst of the judges said he has no sin. At that cross, he is dying an unjust death. But the God of justice is reconciling people to himself on the account of mercy and grace. Praise the name of the living God. That is why when he was going through pain, he took time to still explain to us what he is doing. Dying on the cross, there is even someone who is healed and yet he is also crucifying him. Dying on the cross, a thief calls upon him because he is a God of justice. He is going through injustice but he is also a God of mercy. And he says, tonight you will be with me in paradise. It's only at the cross where the wrath of God, where sinners in the hands of an angry God are saved by the hands of the same God. Because no one can save you from God. I, I hear people saying, you know, I fear hell because the devil is there. The devil is always around. He's always hovering around. That's what the Bible says. I don't fear hell because the devil will be there. I fear hell because it was made by God. I wish hell was made by the devil. Because it, the devil is not all-powerful. The hell would not have been perfect for pain. But a hell made by God, who is all perfect, all powerful, all just. Oh, I pray that none of us gets there. Praise the name of the living God. Because there you fall squarely in the wrath of a just God. To get all that you deserve. <laughs> Mercy in the name of justice, is actually getting what, not getting what you deserve. Mercy is not getting what you deserve, which is wrath. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. In any way, it is only an account of God. In conclusion, we have a cry for justice in this country and we'll be making a prayer. And I noted a few of them that are very conspicuous. One of them is the issue of debts and pending bills. The Bible says, Psalms 37 verse, verse 21. It says, The wicked borrows and does not repay. But the righteous shows mercy and gives. The wicked borrows and does not repay. Because I know, like, for, for example, in PC Adome, most of us are business people. And I know you have gone through the pain of people not paying up their bills. You have gone through the pain, and some of the people are the people you trust. People you can see they can, but they are not doing it. And people say, those are the wicked that God is saying they are in his hands. But this, the same is happening with the government. 
How many people gave, gave uh, services to the government, gave goods to the government, and are now poor? Because of this thing they call pending bills. They look for good names to talk about pending bills. Pending bills or theft. Because if somebody gives you something and you don't pay them, there's no better word but to say you are a thief. And these wicked people are sitting there. I saw governor saying we want to do an audit. That's okay if you want to do an audit. But how can an audit take five years? We are not going to pay until we do an audit. Five years. As people keep on crying and crying and crying. And the president keeps on saying pay bedding bills. We are going to give money for bedding bills, bedding bills, bedding bills. These bedding bills are people who gave their lives and livelihoods and served. Yet the people who give nothing are already paid. There is a dam that is being decommissioned. I think it's called Luake Dam. Where somebody was paid money to do environmental assessment. Millions. And still, we got water that cannot be used. Those who don't do anything are paid. Those who give are not paid. Number two is the pain inflicted by the tongue. If you look at what that says, the mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. And his tongue talks of justice. Sometimes the injustice that we see is done by the tongue. And there are so many people that are hurt by the tongue. People have spoken painful things to them. People have said things they should never say. Children have been messed up by parents who say things they shouldn't. By teachers who say things they shouldn't. By siblings who say things they shouldn't. Sometimes by lovers who in their anger speak things that have hurt people. Pain inflicted by the tongue, number three, the deliberate attempt to destroy the young generation. There is no time that pornography has been more accessible than today. And it's a deliberate attempt. Drugs are being sold all over, even in high schools. Even in high schools. You see drugs being sold to children. And sometimes people think you make money like that and you hope your life will always be okay. Woe oh, unto you, woe oh, unto you. The issue of violence, even at homes, has destroyed the lives of many young people. Number four, the corruption and bribery perpetrated by the government. The issue of if you don't, I, I remember being told, no less but a policeman, now you a question what to wear. Can you imagine? So it's supposed to be a skill. Bribery is supposed to be a skill we learn. It's like a survival tactic in Kenya. We need to learn the skill. It's like we need to go to a school of corruption and bribery to be shown. When you are this, you bribe like this. You must talk like this so that you know which language is for bribery. So that if you say, if I have done anything wrong, take me to the court. They are not willing. I don't know why, if I am wrong. And finally, the delay and denial of justice in our courts. It is Amos who says, the last verse we have read, Amos 5.24, but let justice run down like a river and righteousness like a mighty stream. There are so many court cases, some of them 30 years old, some of them 20 years old, some of them are a few years old and we know them. There was a time university students were killed in a very big way. Starting with, with Sharon in Nikori, with a guy we used to call Kidero in Mary University. So many students were killed. Yesterday night I was watching news and two girls were coming from Saudi Arabia in a coffin. They went for a job. The agent said they, work, they, they went with is registered in Kenya and they have an office in Kenya. But even when she is dead, are, even the body, it's difficult to get the body itself. This is how the country has been. It is so painful, especially for a parent. When you know you have taken your, your, your uh, reason to it was one of the girls' schools, I will leave the name, uh, uh, I will not name which name, but I remember hearing of a case and getting to know a bit of the details of the case of how one of the girls was peddling drugs within a school. It's painful when you know you took your, your child to school hoping that they will come out better, that they are coming out worse. It's 
painful. It's painful to know that your son was okay until he met so and so. And I speak standing on this altar that even this issue of sponsors, the sponsors are not free. You may say, no, they are 18 years old, so they have a consent, they want money, it is their problem. But the reality is, this is an adult who have seen life and destroy children. Just because they are 18 years old does not mean they are not children. They are not safe in the hands, mighty hands of a just God. A day is coming of recompense that the cry of the poor shall be avenged. For the tears of the poor are the downtrodden. And those who lack power to get justice, those tears fall in the hands of the mighty God. The crucibles of tears are coming to fill. And when they begin to spill over, you will fall squarely in the hands of the mighty God. And when God decides to do it, we shall see. We have seen the people who have looted this nation. And not just one person. There are many who have looted this nation. Are gathering to come against the country in 2022. They are organizing themselves to make sure we remain the same. A poor country that speaks like we are a state of America. You hear an MP talking and comparing us with Dubai. What's wrong with you? People are, are, are hungry in Nairobi, in the city. Dubai is nowhere to be seen with you. There is not Dubai. Kenya on average is a slum. We are literally a slum. We should not be talking about comparing us with Japan and whatever. We should be talking about how can we feed our people? Who cares about these express highways? Who cares? Who cares? So sometimes we, <laughs> we live in a cocoon called Nairobi. So jam is a big thing for you. Ah, oh, jam. To some other places, they are dying of diseases like malaria that have vaccines and treatment. Before we think of COVID, <laughs> we think of malaria. Do you know the highest cause of death in the country? Diarrhea. So why? You're talking about Dubai? And you're dying of diarrhea? There's something wrong with us. And our leaders seem to live in a world in Dubai, for example. They seem to live in Dubai. I have no, no problem with the developments that come. But I have a problem. When this development comes at the back of children dying of diarrhea. There is a village they showed the other day in a documentary where every home has lost a child. No single home has ever lost a child. Either during birth or immediately after birth, they have always lost a child. The whole village. And the nearest hospital is kilometers away. But what do we do? Let's open a gun factory. Heavenly Father, we stand in this place to cry for justice. We stand on your word that you are a God of justice. We stand, oh God, on the history that you are the God of justice. We stand on the premises of Jesus Christ that you are the God of justice. If it were not so, we should be hopeless. But we are not 
because our hope is that the mighty hands of the God of justice he has our cry. Yes, Jesus, you are the one who has a cry of the poor and drowned told them. As their leaders squander the money and they die of diseases that have cure. As their leaders throw them out of their comforts without any hope of ever owning a home. While the systems work against the just, when the system is against the righteous, our cry falls on your hands, O oh God. And as a country, O oh God, we look at an year of elections and we begin to fear. We begin to know that the same people who have caused people to fight, who have taken our land, who have taken our children captive, who have allowed our old to die are the same people calling for power. And we do not have any power to stop them. We don't have any money to stop them. Oh, but we have you, oh God, on our side. Oh, we fall on your mighty hands, oh God. Oh, may the God of justice reign in this country. Our prayer is that, oh God, our country will not fall in the hands of the unjust and the unrighteous. Oh, God of justice, may you reign in our nation. Oh, God of justice, may you hear the cry for the helpless. Oh, God of justice, may you reign. May you reign. And we pray, oh God, even for those reasoning to us, and they know injustice have been met upon them. We pray that you may rise up, oh God, and conquer for them, oh God. We know injustice has reigned for long. But oh Lord, we pray that we may raise a standard against it. That we may raise against it, O oh God. Oh God of Mordecai, may you stand and show yourself faithful. God of Daniel, show yourself faithful. God of Shadrach, Mishra, Abednego, raise yourself, O oh God, and may the enemy scatter. May righteousness roll like a river and justice like a mighty stream. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord bless you.